Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. You catch up with us a very, very short way into a, a little river session for a couple of hours and literally on the first flick we've connected to an angry chub. So it's a few bits of weed in that round here. I'm going to concentrate on getting this in and then we'll talk to you a little bit more when we've got a bit more time about what we're actually doing. Well, there we are. Now honestly, that could not have worked any better. We, um, we're still fishing the Wensum. We've done a few videos on the Wensum chub fishing, but this is the first time we've come to this particular stretch and we've done a bit of asking around people of what to expect. And they said there was a few chub to be had, but very, very rare do I come out and catch a fish at a new place on literally my very, very first cast. The camera wasn't even ready. It was almost a bit of exploratory, see what the river was doing. And this guy came up and absolutely nailed it. The purpose of today's video is not about rigs at all. It's about watercraft. So what I'll do is I'll quickly slip this one back and then we'll sit down and talk to you about that in more detail. Well, what a cracking way to start the session. So what we've done is just move slightly away from that peg and I'm just going to sit here for a couple of minutes and talk to you a little bit about why we're down here today. And that is because I get asked so many times while I'm at work or on, on social media, where is the best place to fish in, in regards to location to put your bait? So that's what I'm here today to show you. And hopefully by the end of this little talking bit, you have a bit of understanding of why I fish where I do and perhaps where you should fish if you're not fishing these places already. So let's get the rig out of the way because this is seriously complicated. We've got eight pound main line to a hook. So there we go, that's that one done. No, in all seriousness, it is all about location. We're just free lining today. There's nothing complicated about the rig and this emphasizes it because you cannot get any more simple about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and give you two examples. And what I try and say, the best thing about watercraft and where to fish is put yourself in the fisher's situation. Try and relate it back to human aspects of life if so. So the first one I'm gonna say, we're doing it in a river today, but you can use these kind of tactics in, in lakes as well is where would you be? So for example, the river's really low and clear today. If you're sitting just down here with about a foot of water in show of everything, now we're top of the food chain. We don't have to worry about this, but chub, dace, anything, any fish, they're not. There's herons, otters, all sorts of thing. If you're small enough, a pike, anything can come along and grab you. So the last place you wanna sit is right in the middle on show, just as you wouldn't if you were out somewhere and you were being hunted as well. You'd be hiding under trees, you'd be getting in reeds, deep holes, anywhere to get out of the way and feel safe. And that's no different to fish. So that's all they're doing is they're just trying to make themselves safe. So look for trees, look for reed beds, look for deep holes, anywhere where they can get out of the way, you'll probably find the vast majority of fish. Now this isn't the standard 100%, that's always where they're gonna be. They've obviously got fins, they move around, but if you put yourselves in the right location, more often than not, you're gonna catch and get better results on the bank. And then the second thing, this is more related to the river. Another thing is why chub are quite easy to find what we're targeting today. Is say if, if someone put you in a wind tunnel and they built you in a big area and they built one brick wall right in the middle of it, where are you gonna stand? You're gonna stand right behind that brick wall out of all the wind. So again, you put that back into to a fishing situation, you've got fast flowing river, you're expending loads of energy just trying to stay still. Why would you not sit in a deep hole, a big boulder in the middle of the river where the, the, the river goes either side of it and creates an eddy behind it? That's where you're gonna sit, you're expending no energy, food's coming past in them little bits, and it just makes pure sense for them to be there. So this is all about trying to find those little spots, the sweet spots, should we say, about where fish are gonna hide. And you can do this wherever you go, lakes or rivers. Just think, where would I be if I was in this situation? If you start to think like that, you definitely do get better results. So watercraft, in my opinion, is probably the most key thing in fishing you could ever take anywhere with you. I'd rather spend a minute in the right place rather than 24 hours in the wrong place. And as that first cast just proved to us, literally the baits hit the water, five seconds later, wham, we're into a fish. So it is all location, location, location. So let's, um, let's move on. I'm eager to get fishing. We're gonna have a wander down this bank and see if we can get another one for you. Oh, 
Okay, so we've come a few hundred yards down river and we've found what we were talking about, one of those likely looking spots. So I'll just quickly talk you through about this in particular peg and we'll try and put some of those bits into practice we're talking about. So the, why I think this is a good area is one just to the right here, it funnels really narrow the river and it's pushing through quite fast, but then it opens up with a lovely, really thick weed bed which goes into a clear spot underneath some hanging trees. So you've almost got everything. You've got like the slack water, which they like sitting in behind reeds and a tree over the head. That looks the perfect place for a fish to be sitting. All the other river is completely covered with a stream of weed. So, I mean, yeah, they could be sitting underneath that, but you can't fish there. So it's pointless to even trying to worry about that. You've got to fish the areas you can fish. And that little clear bit at the back there, underneath the trees, just looks prime for a fish. Got a good pair of glasses on so I can see a lot of the river. You can see the odd little fish scooting in and out of the reeds. But I can't see anything at the back. It's all dark and looks like a place where they'll be hiding. Like I said, this isn't always going to happen. They're not always going to be there. But you'll know within three or four runs through, you have to spend, what, five minutes here? Move on to the next one. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to have three or four little trots through there in that slower water at the back there. If there's a fish there, I'm sure he's going to nail it. If there isn't, we'll move on and find one somewhere else. Okay, so we've moved on just to the next likely looking location and this is a great point to talk about because although the swim we last just show you scream chub, it's an absolutely, if you could put build a swim, you'd build it like that, it just looks perfect. Well, we didn't manage to catch out of it. So like I said, it's not, it's not a hard and fast rules, but you just keep dropping yourselves in the right area, you will find one eventually. So this one is completely different and this is probably more important because this is so easily to walk past this swim. From what we've told you about you looking for trees and bowls and all there's nothing here this is like plain river but it's then when you look closely do you start to see the differences and sometimes it's the little things in fishing that you miss that could have got you that bite so on this one all the flow is going on the far side and on this this near side i'm trying to i'm step back a bit and trying to be a little bit quiet because there's no cover but there's a really deep hole and i've like i said i've, I've sort of crept down in my glasses looked over and you can see that is shallow around it, a lovely deep hole, and that's the kind of place that, that fish are going to be sitting. So although from above the water and around the water probably doesn't look like the most appealing, underneath the water, I bet that's a lovely little area they're going to sit in. So like I said, not always. We could quite easily drop in here and catch nothing, but we keep doing this. I'm sure we will catch another one. So I'm going to crawl down the bank here, and this is nothing thing worth mentioning. While you're fishing like this, if there's a load of cover in that, yeah, you can be... I wouldn't ever be noisy, but certainly like this, we've got no trees around us, nothing on the far side, we're gonna cast shadows over the water. It's gonna be really easy to spook these fish in this little swim. So if you are in a swim that's not quite as overgrown that, make sure you're extra careful just to creep in there before you place your bait. Okay, so we've come a bit further down the river. The uh, spots I thought were gonna produce haven't, so perhaps it's time to step it up a bit. I'm standing probably, well, I can't even see the river. I must be 20, 30 yards away from it and stinging nettles everywhere. But what I can see is three lovely overhanging trees that are obviously overhanging the river. So it's time to get a bit more serious. Wish me luck, I'm now going in. If I come out alive, hopefully it'll be with a fish. I've got my waders on, I've had them on from the start. I'm going to climb through all these stinging nettles and trees and that. And hopefully when I get down there, I'm going to be surprised and, and see the river's deep enough to, to trot under them trees. And there's, if it is, there's got to be a chub there. I mean, I can't, no one can't have fished this for a good while. Like I said, there's no path down there. No one's trampled anything down. So if I can get down there, if I can get a bait there, I think it's going to be the first bait they've seen there for an awful long time. Well, we've managed to find another fish, as you can see, in a bit, a bit of a jungle. I don't quite know um, what I'm going to do here. It's more about uh, finding where to fish rather than uh, what we're going to do if we hook one. But we have got one on. It's a lovely deep hole. I'm getting attacked by flies. 
all sorts, but you have got to fish where the fish are. I mean, it's pointless wasting your time in swims where there's no fish. I'm gonna see if I can somehow get this fish over these reeds. Get in there. Come in with a half a wee bit round his face, but he's in the net. I'm going to try and scramble back through this jungle and see if we can get him on the mat and have a look at him. What a result that is. Nice. Right, there we are. We've just took him a little bit out the back. I brought the mat down rather than scrambling all the way back through these rushes. I just quickly slipped that hook out, but that was what I was saying earlier, that sometimes you just have to go where you think the fish are going to be rather than where it's comfortable for you to fish. I think he's pretty clear of weed from there. But yeah, he came with a, a big ball of weed, sitting under that tree, which we expected. Doesn't look like anyone's probably, well certainly for the last few months, put a bait there because there's just no path whatsoever. We've, clambered through stinging nettles, rushes and trees to get down to the bank and even then we weren't exactly close to it so that's what we're saying definitely put the effort in because here you go you can get the rewards so uh without further ado we'll slip him back perhaps have another little walk down the river try a few more swims we're not here for long but if that's uh if that's a reward for a few hours hard work then i'm happy with that one let's get him back well, we've worked our way down the whole river and we've come to the end of this particular stretch. So I'm just going to have a quick talk to you about the baits before we sign off. We're going to call it a day there. I'm going to work my way back up the river to the car later. But this is the end for the cameras now. And like I said, we'll just show you what we were using as a backup bait and the main bait. So the main bait was just lobworm, a great big appealing bait. Loads of smell, loads of movement. And it's really simple. Use a big hook, a big strong hook. Chub have got massive mouths, hook it through the saddled ones and then it just trot it down as it is. There's loads of movement as I said and that does look really natural. And all we brought as a backup bait was a bit of bread. Again the river's lovely and clear so we could nick a bit of that on and you can watch your bait for an awful long way down the river. That does give you a second attempt also, a bit of crust, just float that down in a few likely looking areas and occasionally if they're really confident you can get the chub come up and take it and that's great fun if you can get a situation like that so always take a bit of bread but the main culprit today was the worm two lovely fish one of the small ones as well just a little tiny one and a couple of other rattles that we didn't manage to hook up with but i hope the purpose of this video was like i said to show you the questions that i've had is all about watercraft and i hope i've taught you that if anything else so i hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching and we'll see you again on the next one